So researchers have found that marijuana improves memory. Really? Well, I'm going to tell you in this video why the words researchers have found are so dangerous and three reasons why marijuana never could and never will improve your memory. Not that I don't think that you should smoke it if that's your thing. That's coming right up. So yeah, researchers have found, researchers have found. You know why you see that term so often? It's really, really quite simple. It's because universities need lots of cash, and so they send out public relations notices and PR forms and so forth, talking about new studies that have been produced by the scientists working at their schools to keep their names top of mind. And in some senses, there's nothing wrong with showing new research uh, out there, new work that people have done, and even the names of new researchers doing new stuff that you might want to know about. But the problem is, is that it's awfully misleading because researchers have found is often followed by a whole bunch of stuff that means basically they have made some observations and these observations suggest this or that thing. And the things that they suggest are often far from conclusive, far from what you'd think that they're suggesting, and they require a certain level of analytical and objective thought that typical interpreters and writers of public relations reports and press releases just don't seem to have a knack for. So when I read earlier today that researchers have found that marijuana can improve memory, I got real interested in what kind of mistake they made today. <laughs> because when you look at the article, look, Soul Brother Salute, this will help improve your memory. You'll love it. Water. <laughs> Water is so good for you. The thing is that you can't you can't make conclusions about things that are tested on mice and then apply them to human behavior. So there may be some cross indications and so forth, and there might be some things to be said about what happens to mice and men or humans. But the problem is, is that mice don't smoke marijuana. And the study is not talking about smoking marijuana. It's talking about the application of a compound found in marijuana to the brains of mice. But most of the public are gonna look at this headline and they're gonna have an image in their mind of marijuana as we have come to know it. And uh, that's not what is happening here. It's a compound from marijuana that is being used to activate certain centers of the brain that marijuana can activate and then they are applying all of this to lab rats. Now here's the problem with lab rats and making conclusions about their memory and applying it to ours. Well, okay, to be fair, we all do run our own little mazes in life, don't we? Yes, but you still gotta think, you know? The memory advantages of being a rat that does nothing other than sit in a cage all day and then run some mazes once in a while. Hmm. Is that really something that makes you think you want a memory advantage that uh, has been, has created maze running abilities? And it, it, I mean, it's, it is in a way very attractive because you have the whole thing about memory techniques relying so heavily and primarily and rightly so on things like spatial memory which is a great thing to develop but you don't need to take any kind of marijuana or compound in order to do that you could just get good and practice using memory palaces memory palaces are of course a wonderful thing and uh, I would be delighted if I could teach them to rats but they seem to have a pretty decent ability to create them on their own and apparently they get a slight advantage when they have some marijuana. But again, they don't smoke it. It's a substance that is introduced into their brains <laughs> with, with no joints. They're not rolling joints. So uh, 
I find that quite a shocking presentation in the news today. So one thing you can do is make sure that when you read these news stories, you always look for this term, researchers have found. Because usually what you're going to find is that they haven't really found anything, but rather that piece is talking about a study that has been published, which is fine, which is great. And then the nature of that study is very interesting to look at so that you can see what kinds of things they're testing and perhaps why, but uh, always with a mind to understanding on what are they testing in. And this all relates to the issue of testing memory for language learning, because when you're testing your memory for language learning in scientific studies, usually what they're doing is they're taking Chinese characters or some list of vocabulary from some language and they're testing it on people who don't care about that language and they get great rates of recall which is amazing but to my knowledge I've yet to see a study where they gave a list of words to people who actually cared about that language who actually wanted to study that language who actually wanted a memory advantage and then used some basic memory training on them to see what advantage the combination of the desire to learn a language and the mnemonics brings together. So we know, we can predict very reasonably that anybody who takes memory training will go from about 40% short-term recall to about 80 to 85% long-term or short-term recall. And then you'll have a a sense of a curve for long-term recall relative to the nature of the study and how many repetitions of the mnemonic imagery is rehearsed by the person in the study and so forth and mnemonics will win every time to have a higher rate of recall. But what we don't have are studies where rats take marijuana while learning French. No, I'm kidding. But what we don't have is <laughs> we don't have studies where where, and if you know them, please send them my way. But uh, we don't have studies where people have taken, they're, they're studying French and they're already at like say A2, maybe B1, whatever, and they're passionate. They've been tested for the integrity of their actual wish and desire to learn French. And then they are given mnemonic training and then given the exact same tests that have shown 85% recall. My prediction, that that will go up to 95, 98, 99, 100% recall, because passion becomes the driver for the uh, success of using the memory techniques at a higher level, rather than just scientific. So why don't we do some studies like that? Well, it's all a matter of getting the research funding together and designing the studies and so forth, but uh, until that time comes, and until I can maybe come up with a way to influence the creation of such studies myself, I'm going to get my soul bottle into the library and memorize some playing cards and learn some Chinese and study some memory science a little bit more so that my mind can be more prepared to weed out the BS when yet another news story comes out telling me and you that researchers have found something because the PR machine is about bringing your eyes to advertisements. And you know what? So is mine. So if you enjoyed this and you want more information about improving your memory and you'd like some Memory Palace training and you'd like to fill your life with excitement because you've learned how to rapidly learn and remember and recall information with much greater ease, with higher levels of recall because someone has helped you attach your passion, that driving engine of energy that creates itself to your learning projects, then I got a free video course for you. All you gotta do is go to magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash YT and we'll get you registered up. And I know you're gonna love it and it's a lot of fun and a lot of people, they push those retention rates very, very high just by learning a couple of simple memory strategies, the 
one we start with is the memory palace, which is the king of them all, because it's the one memory technique that you can use all other memory techniques directly inside of. So, if that sounds like fun for you, magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash YT, and I look forward to seeing you over there. Until we speak again, keep yourself safe from the science, safe from the PR about the science, and keep yourself magnetic.